This is the video lecture for the Free Fall and Air Resistance lesson plan. It was created by Brett Blevins and edited and narrated by Sean Krupa. This video and accompanying lesson plan are part of Ohio University's Boat of Knowledge in the Science classroom, funded by the National Science Foundation. The picture on the right shows an elephant and a feather. If we drop these two from the same height, which one lands first? The elephant lands first, but why? Take a few minutes to answer this question. You can pause the video and resume when you're ready to continue. If you answered air resistance, you're correct. Air resistance, also known as drag, is a force that acts in the opposite direction of movement when traveling through a fluid. The Earth's atmosphere, or air, is the fluid in the case of this freefall. To watch two objects fall in the absence of air resistance, watch the YouTube link provided. Here, an astronaut will drop a feather and a hammer on the surface of the moon. Resume the video when you're ready to continue. You should have seen that the hammer and the feather land at the same time. But why do they land at the same time? In a vacuum, such as the atmosphere of the moon, there are no air particles to collide with the object and therefore no air resistance. To understand air resistance and drag a little bit better, let's review Newton's second law. Newton's second law says that the sum of the forces on an object is equal to the mass of the object times its acceleration. Or in other words, the acceleration of an object is equal to the sum of the forces on that object divided by its mass. Here's the equation for drag force. It's not as scary as it looks. Rho is the density of the fluid. V is the velocity of the object. A is the reference area. And CD is a constant depending on the object. There are a few things to note about this equation. One is that the less dense of a fluid you're traveling through, the smaller your air resistance will be. The second is that the drag force is dependent on velocity squared. If you double your velocity, the drag force will increase by a factor of four. Finally, the drag force is proportional to the area. Therefore, things with a small area will have a small drag force, and things with a large area will have a larger drag force. Let's look at free body diagrams in a vacuum. The net force on each object is only affected by the force of gravity. There's no air resistance to stop the object from accelerating. In the picture on the left, you see two objects with greatly different masses. But dividing the force of gravity by the mass of each object results in the same acceleration, so they fall at the same rate and would hit the ground at the same time, just like the hammer and the feather. Now let's introduce air resistance into the equation. These are free body diagrams for the elephant and the feather at various times during the course of the fall. Here's what you should notice. First, here's what you should notice. At all times during the fall, the air resistance on the elephant is less than the force of gravity. Therefore, it keeps accelerating at all times. But the feather's air resistance increases quickly. And soon it's equal to the force of gravity. When the air resistance and the force of gravity are equal, it can't accelerate. This is why the elephant would hit the ground first if you were free-falling with air resistance. Now let's talk about terminal velocity. Terminal velocity happens when an object is falling at a constant speed because the downward force of gravity is equal to the upward force of drag. Let's look at another free body diagram. Here, the sum of the forces is the drag force minus the gravity force. We said that the drag force increases with velocity up until the point where it's equal to the gravitational force. When we solve for the acceleration, 
we see that the numerator goes to zero as the object speeds up. If the numerator goes to zero, then A goes to zero, and it stops accelerating. This is what a graph of velocity versus time of a falling object with drag might look like. You'll see that at short times, the velocity increases quickly. But as the velocity increases, the drag force increases. When the drag force increases, the acceleration begins to become smaller, and the velocity increases less rapidly. For long times, the acceleration goes to zero, and we see that the green line approaches the blue line. On this graph, the blue line is the terminal velocity. Here are some terminal velocities of common objects. For a human skydiving, the terminal velocity depends on your area. If your arms and legs are extended, you can fall at a maximum of 125 miles per hour. If you keep your arms and legs glued to the sides of your body, you can fall at an amazing 714 miles per hour, which is the world record. Other objects, like raindrops, baseball, and ping pong balls, have smaller terminal velocities. You might wonder what some applications of air resistance are. One is the study of aerodynamics. Aerodynamics is the science of reducing air resistance or drag. There are multi-billion dollar industries devoted to reducing the drag on things like automobiles and other objects. Because so much money is invested in this, this is a great opportunity for people with a STEM background to get a career. In summary, we looked at Newton's laws with and without air resistance. We introduced the drag force and looked at its properties. Finally, we defined terminal velocity and looked at terminal velocity for common objects. This concludes the video lecture on air resistance and drag. Thanks for your attention.